Hey, what's up, guys? All right, so uh, in this video that uh, I want to describe the this theorem and uh, give the proof. Okay, so uh, basically this theorem is interesting, right? It says that if the vector space X is finite dimensional, then all norms are equivalent. Okay, so let me just uh, so I, I so I think everyone knows about the norm, right? So I'll give a like vector space, right? You can define a norm. So the norm is basically you give a vector uh, v. And they map to some uh great positive greater uh uh non negative uh number. Okay. So uh, in this video, I will assume that uh, x is real uh a fine dimensional uh real number uh a real number uh, fine dimensional vector space. And it's trivial that uh, if x is a vector space over a real number, then in n dimensional is isomorphic to any r defined for a particular. N. Okay, so this is norm. And uh, and you can define different norm, right? So the what what I mean is what I mean is I want to I need to first uh define this equivalent. Okay, so uh what I say right I should write a definition right if I say the this norm and uh, this norm are equivalent. Uh, means that uh if for any uh if there's exist as I say exist a C one greater than zero and a C two greater than zero such that uh, for any x in this vector space, if I compute the first norm, right, this first norm is always bounded by some number from uh, some C1 number of the second norm, and then some C2 number. Uh, okay, so some, sometimes I will use the single line, sometimes I will use the, the double, but it's the same. So let me just use this, this, C2, uh, X2. Okay, and the C1 and C2 are independent of x. Okay, so this basically is, is the definition of the first norm and second norm, and what we say they are equivalent if this is true. If this is true, okay, hopefully it's very simple, understandable. Okay, so this theorem says the following, right? This theorem says that if X is Rn, then basically uh, any two norms, any two norms are equivalent. 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 Uh, okay, so what this means that if you take any two vector space, then you can you can you take any two normal, right? you can always find some c one c two such that it is true. Okay, uh, so let's uh, go through the proof. Okay, so uh, okay, so let me just provide the first step. So the step one, what I think is that I want to use the the standard norm, right? So I step one, so step one, I want to say the following. I want to say that uh, uh, it's uh, it's uh, sufficient, or basically it's sufficient. Uh, yeah, it's sufficient uh, to show that, uh, to show what? To show that uh, any norm is equivalent to the standard one. Standard one. Okay, so standard one basically, I guess it's two norm. Right? So let me just write down, right? So given a vector space V in Rn, right, you can always find uh, also normal basis. Let's say this is our basis. And if you write x equals to uh, alpha i e i, i from one to n, then you can define the norm of x or standard norm. Let's say two norms, basically the uh, the sum of alpha i square, like a square root. Okay. And uh, okay, so the proof. So basically, I want to say that this theorem is true if 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 I can show that uh, any two norm, uh, any norm are equivalent to the standard one. Uh, so proof is simple, right? So let me just write down the the okay. So suppose this is true. Suppose step one is true. Okay, so that means that uh I can write C one. Let's say C one is the first some norm, particular norm. Uh, uh it's this greater than or equal to uh, less or equal to the standard one, right? So standard one. Let's say standard one is this double dot uh is I use double line. D two uh x one. There's a, another another norm. C two prime. Okay, so suppose this is true, then it's trivial that you can see the following, right? You can see that the first small norm uh is less or equal to one over C one X. That's or equal to C two divided by C one. Oh, sorry. Ben, I'm stupid. So it's 
Okay, so is this C2 prime divided by C1, X2. And this one is using, I see, I use this, right? So it's one over C2 X less than, uh, Okay, uh, greater or equal to the, sorry, sorry, this is two. Greater than, oh, this is C1 prime C2 X2. Okay, so what, what I show is the following. I show is that uh, now this one and this one, this one, right? So this show that the one and two are equivalent. Okay, so basically it's trivial that if I can show that, if, if I can show that any norm is, is, uh, is, then, is, uh, equivalent to a standard one, then this will be trivial. Okay. Okay, so now uh, let's go through step two. Right? So step two is basically uh, show, so I well, I so I want to show the end norm, right, compared to this, to the standard one. Okay, and what I want to show is, about, I, what I want to say is that uh, it is sufficient, sufficient uh, to show uh, this is true. Uh, when x is normalized, so when it's when x is a uh, is a and I say I can fix two norm to be one. Okay, so uh, this is trivial, right? The the reason is that if this is true, then what what I want to say is that then uh, so so far for particular norm, right? And this norm is like. If I can show that this is true. Okay, so this is what I want, what I want to show. I want to show this for any uh for any x in v, right? So this is what I want to show. Uh but this is true. Uh if if this if I fix x to be like normal, uh if I fix x uh to be normalized, right? The reason is that I I I uh, I can rescale x, right? Because I can rescale x. So right, so I can rescale x so that uh, if I divide by x, then by the property of normal of x, this will be true. Okay. okay so step three is very true, just using the continuity. Continuity. So notice the following, right? I can define a, a f from a vector space R n to the particular to that particular norm that you want to show, right? Okay. By just making the right, just run the right on definition given x, I just put this. So, uh, continuity says that uh, this x one is continuous function. Continuous. It's a continuous function, and this proof is trivial just by definition. Uh, you can prove the this is true from the norm, the definition of norm. Okay. Okay. So now, uh, we can go to the final step. Four. So final step four is just prove these results, right? So proof. So idea is that so I only need to focus on the the left hand side to the I I only need to uh, focus on the uni ball, okay? And I know that's so I know f of x, right? This this guy is uh is a uh, is uh since f is continuous, right? And this ball is compact, so I know that this is compact. Uh, okay, so I should spend notation. So I should define s. To be the x in v, the uh, norm is one, and I know that f of s is compact because uh, s is compact. Okay, so since f of s is compact, so what this means that there is this the maximum and minimum, right? So there is a c one, c two, uh, such that this is true, right? So this means that uh, any x we're bounded by this, right? right. So uh, once you have this, then basically you prove the results, right? Because uh, what what you have shown is that if you restrict it on the unit ball, then it's true. And ba but basically you can see the following, right? You can say that uh, if, if I give you, uh, if I give you, X prime, right? You can you can basically normalize, right? You can normalize into like X divided by X divided by X norm, right? And uh, what what uh once you do it, then you can plug in, right? And you get 
uh, the region. You you can you can normalize to to this, right? And then you put it in. Then what you what you have shown is the follow. Right. This is what you what uh what you can get. Okay. And uh, basically, you can also say that C one C two are achievable, right? On this complex. Set. Okay. So basically, this is an interesting proof, I think. And, and it's an interesting theorem that uh, I want to share. Okay. See you guys next videos.